So, hello zusammen. Hi everyone. And welcome back after this break. So it's my pleasure to introduce Nico von Tadden. He is uh, leading the network engineering team at Pfalzcom, a regional ISP in Germany. And he's giving a lightning talk about LoRaWAN, which is an alternative connectivity method for IoT devices. Nico, the stage is yours. Hello, everyone. Let me just give you a brief introduction or overview of, over LoRaWAN, which is a connectivity method for IoT devices, as Florian said. It's a technology for transmitting data data over larger distances. It's low power and it's low data rate. It uses the ISM band, but it has a high range. You can get over 100 kilometers if you are very brave, but usually between 40 and 50 kilometers are doable. It's optimized for long battery life and cheap equipment is available from China, so Arduino-based products and everything else. How does it work? It's running over the 868 megahertz band. 433 is available too, but it's currently not widely used. It's using the LoRa modulation, which moves over frequencies very fast, so it sounds like a chirp from a bird, and therefore it's easier to receive at the far end. It's double encrypted payload. It uses a, a network key and an application key, and therefore the network server can be separated from the application server. The network operator does not necessarily need to decrypt the payload you send over your network. It's a central-based network, so each receiving gateway has connectivity to usually one cluster of server, where it forwards the data, and the central cluster then decides what to do with the data. The typical use cases are cheap or battery powered sensors, not necessarily cheap. On the left, you can see a substation where the um, power gets transformed down to 240 volts for your normal household. And you can see a power meter for the transformer. And on the left side, you can see a LoRa gateway which transmits this data back to the company, which is uh, my company in this case. Uh, on the right side, you can see an Arduino, uh, and the, in the middle, you can see a room sensor, which can measure temperature, humidity, and occupancy. And you can see a parking lot sensor, um, which is commonly used at some supermarkets nowadays, or sometimes with uh, electric vehicle charging stations to make sure that they are not blocked when no one is charging at them. The packet flow uh, is pictured on the right. The sensor will just send out its data. All gateways in the region will receive this data and forward to their respective central server. The central server will decide if the packet can be decrypted because it has the key. If it can't be decrypted, it's obviously not for his network and then the packet will be discarded. If the decryption is successful, it will forward the data to the selected application server. Sometimes this will happen on the same network then because the network and the application server is integrated. The application can generate an answer like an egg or even more data for the downlink, but it not, does not have to. You can also generate data packets for sensors when they are not actively sending, but it does not make sense for sensors which are connected uh, with a battery. But there are um, actors available, for example, to control street lighting. Some cities are switching over to Loro one here too. When to use, um, when you have rare transmissions, so only 10 to 15 or 20 minutes interval or even longer, uh, when you want to send over small data packets from battery powered sensors, which are anywhere in the region and you've got no other connectivity. When not to use it, definitely when you've got fast changing data, it does not make sense to send out a packet every 15 minutes if the, pack, um, the data changes every second. Um, and it's not allowed for smart metering in the electricity um, sense for households, but it can be used for water, gas, or other means of metering from people at home could say that the alternative to LoRaWAN is NB-IoT or something else. And the alternative when not to use it is, for example, BLE or so Bluetooth Low Energy. There are 
just a alphabetically list of common LoRaWAN networks. Um, the one, uh, the IoT star in the middle is the one which I am working on from our company. The others are common in Germany or KPN in the Netherlands. They provide um, coverage all over the Netherlands. Um, the most important one for some of you might be the TTN or the Things Network, which is a community network where everyone can host their own gateway to the network. But as LoRaWAN is running on the ISM bench, there are plenty of more networks and you can even set up your own network if you want. You can hook up the gateway to TTN, for example, or to your own network server. There is an open source one from the Things Network too, um, or ChirpStack, for example. Image sources for the three sensors. And that's basically it. And we even got some time left for questions, if you want. Yes, thank you, Nico. Um, indeed, there was actually a pretty um, good discussion going on in the chat. And uh, from uh, Florian Streibel, there was the question, how good is the indoor reception if you particularly think of something like water meters in closets? Um, you can, the uh, frequency band, especially um, the, the 868 fre megahertz frequency band has quite good indoor penetration. Um, you usually have coverage even in the basement but um, gateways are rather cheap nowadays. Um, I've got one not here right now, which is just a bit over 100 euros. So for example, um, one of the networks I mentioned, the Minol Senna uh, network in the middle, um, they provide um, one gateway per house, which they are um, metering, and therefore they have um, coverage all over the building. So usually with a normal gateway, you can just get coverage within the whole building and the neighboring ones. Um, but also, it does not have to be uh, right next to the window if you want to have um, more coverage. Also, another question which has been stated, what's about the duty cycle? Because high frequency bandwidth is rather limited. Um, from that perspective, what would happen if uh, people put in, let's say, their, their heating, heating thermostats into LoRa? At scale. Um, the frequency band mentioned is in Germany limited to 1% um, of the available time. So every sensor must only transmit at maximum 1% of the available time per hour. So only a bit, some, some seconds up to a minute or something. Um, if you exceed this cycle, um, you just do not act according to local law and therefore Bundesnetzagentur could come to you. Um, I don't know if uh, they care about this frequency band at the moment that much, but uh, technically the, you can could be prosecuted if you are sending every second for some milliseconds. But it, it would work in the first place. Um, it's up to the networks and the end devices to enforce this, um, this time limit. So thank you, Nico. We're approaching the end of this lightning talk. Nico will be around uh, during DNOC and is also answering questions later on in the chat or via direct message. Thanks, everyone. And thanks, Nico. <laughs>